everybody. I hope that you're having a fantastic and blessed week and a wonderful Valentine's Day so far. I want to talk to you about the keys to perfect love, but I want to tell you first of all that this is not just applicable to romantic love. Like last week's post, this can apply to love with family, with friends, or even how you treat yourself. Now, as we are looking at this week of Valentine's Day, you might have noticed a lot of commercialism surrounding this holiday, like any holiday. We see a lot of ads that insist we must buy this or that, that perfect love would be contingent somehow upon buying the right gift for the person that we care about, whether it's getting the right Valentine's for our children or buying something for family members or indulging yourself so that you feel loved on this holiday. There are lots of ads out there suggesting that how much you love and how well you love and how well you receive love is going to depend on the gift you buy today or the gift that you have already purchased that you're giving today. And I want to correct that misconception though. I'm sure most of you realize that Consciously, that isn't true. Those messages are continually pounding at us from every form of media in our culture. So we're confused about what it means to have perfect love and the way that we should go about trying to get it. There are lots of other things that distract us in our search for love, and, and there are lots of webs, websites and apps that are insisting that they can find us the perfect match and all of these things. But there are certain elements that are really important, in fact, essential to true love. True love must originate from God. Whether it's romantic love, love in your family relationships, or the way that you love and care for yourself. It originates all love, all true love originates in the heart of God. Anything that comes from somewhere else or is manufactured or warped into meaning something else is not going to be satisfying. Ultimately, we'll never feel like we have enough of it and it isn't going to be a blessing. So it's, it's a kind of a counterfeit that we can see a lot of times that people are promising for love in our culture. Um, and that's not what we're looking for. We really, as human beings, need and crave true love, true, satisfying, perfect love, the kind of love that Christ demonstrated and the kind of love that we see in 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 through 7. That's actually not just about romantic relationships. It's spoken at weddings, but it's also about the way we love other people in general and the way that we love ourselves. In addition to that scripture, I also want to give you some very key basic elements of what perfect love looks like. And if you practice these in your relationships, you are on the way to establishing optimal relationships, relationships that are founded in perfect love. The first element is grace. We need to remember that because God's love is full of grace, then our love, if we're showing and demonstrating perfect love, should have grace. Grace for ourselves in relationship to ourselves, grace for our family members, and grace for our romantic others. We need to make sure that we remember that we should get grace and we should give grace. We all need grace, but we also need to express grace to other people. Love keeps no record of wrongs. God is a forgiving and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. Those are some of the things that describe God's heart and being made in the image of God and being only truly fulfilled when we become more and more like God in our lifestyle and in our pursuits. That is one thing that we need to include in our relationships plenty of grace because in order to receive the grace of God in ourselves, we need to share grace. So that includes forgiveness, but it also includes making sure that you understand that everyone makes mistakes and you offer grace. Now, along with grace, the next element, number two, is integrity. And there's a balance in the character and nature of God's heart with grace and truth. 
that is perfectly balanced in God's heart. And we need to strive for that too. We'll never be perfect or exactly like God as long as we live on this earth in, in human fleshly form. But we should be trying to get more like him. And the more we do that, the happier and we'll be and the better our relationships with others will be. So integrity means that you are seeking truth in who you are, in your character, in your nature. And you are also seeking to establish truth and integrity and forthrightness in your relationships with other people. That doesn't mean telling that the people that you love that they look fat in their pants. That's not what I mean by being honest in your relationships. Being honest means being honest enough to bless somebody with the truth and give them an opportunity to be the best person that they are. And to be honest with where you're at so that you can give that person an opportunity to engage with you on a real level. So integrity and truth are very, very important. So grace is important, but you also need to remember truth is important. So if someone is, let's say they're smoking, Grace, yes, you love them. You don't hold it against them. You don't harbor bitterness in their heart for smoking or for even even more dangerous things that people might be doing like drugs or overindulging in alcohol. But you're honest with them about that really isn't okay. That isn't what's best for you. And I'm telling you that because I love you. Speak the truth in love. So that's important. It's important to set boundaries and have integrity in truth, but base that integrity in the heart of God where it's perfectly balanced with love. Communication. I talked about that a lot in last week's video. If you didn't see that post, go to my website, teenyager.com, or to my YouTube channel. You can see it there. Um, communication is very important. You can't just expect other people to read your mind. You need to clearly communicate things to other people. You need to talk often about your dreams, your hopes. Communication is key, and that's true in our relationships with God. Being clear in our relationships with God and communicating and spending time with Him often in prayer is very important. And remember, all true love comes from the heart of God. So if we're not communicating with God and connecting with Him, we're going to be dry in our vessels of pouring love into other relationships. So communicate with other people. Make sure it's healthy, clear communication. And encouragement is so important. We want to lift people up. And again, we're doing it in integrity. So we're cheering other people on to be their best selves, to live their best lives. I have some wonderful, encouraging friends. Um, my friend Jan today, I just talked with her on the phone. I so deeply appreciate her. She's always a source of encouragement. And that is one of the things that I love best about my friends. She always is there to encourage me. And so does my husband. My husband encourages me. And I have people in my family that do that. And I like to do that for other people as well. And I find that that creates a very rewarding part of our relationships when we encourage one another and build one another up, not with false compliments, but with genuine things that we believe in for each other and about each other. Always look for the best in other people and praise them for what they can be. Not just who they've been, but who are they are becoming and who they can become. So what you believe in is as the potential of a person, encourage people like a, a really great athletic coach toward their best self. And then life support would be that fifth one. We want to be supportive of someone in life. That means that you're going to pour life into that person as much as possible, doing things that put them above yourself by caring for their needs. That's a life support thing. Hugging somebody is a life support thing. All of those things that we do that make someone else's life sweeter are life support. And they don't have to cost money. Those, those aren't necessarily gifts. Those are just things that we do to demonstrate our love for others by being there for them when they need it, by listening instead of always talking. Those are the ways in which we show life support. Be a source of God's blessings, not the, so the original source. It must come from God, but we can be a, a vessel through which God pours blessings and offers life support to other people. So those are my five things that are key for perfect love. It needs to have grace integrity, communication, encouragement, and life support. 
So I'd love to hear your feedback on ways that, that you offer grace, integrity, communication, encouragement, and life support in your relationships or ideas that you have that you're going to use those things in your relationships. I look forward to hearing from you, and I hope that you all have a love-drenched week and a blessing-filled week. Bye-bye.